So please welcome Dr. Shing Lin Lee. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so uh, while I give a talk to the new audience, I uh, usually take advantage to you how to pronounce my name. Uh, just because the X is not easy to pronounce, uh, but like S, like S. And also in Chinese, also introduced that as how my name is. <laughs> Yeah, as uh, uh, Aaron said, I'm work, doing research work here, but also teaching at the uh, aerospace engineering sciences. Yeah. But today I want to uh, talk to this uh, NASA's first ever uh, five spacecraft um, constellation mission. But then before I start that one, I will try to start like a sun Earth connection. Because all this we try to explore the, the aerospace environment, as is really the sun is really the driver, the sun Earth connection. Um, so this one shows just a background. What I'm trying to say here is, since early dawn of the human kind history, the human kind has been fascinated with the, our planet and its association with the uh, sun and the solar system. And then there's many fairy tale or stories about the sun, and the sun also being worshipped by religions or some cults. And I can tell you, um, even in modern times. They were still, sun was, you know, what, at least like in China, was like a Mao Zedong was compared to the sun. They said Mao Zedong was the red sun. Sun brought the warmth and the light to the human. And the, it should be, the reason they never said. Um, and that's what I was educated as a youth. Yeah, I was not uh, joking, I have proof here too. Um, see, that's, everyone has to hold this uh, uh, Mao red book, quotation book. And all the small uh, tokens, <coughs> that was not like a, about 40 years ago. Um, so we're all educated, Mao is the sun now. Um, yeah, that's just uh, one proof. So, but uh, we, back to the uh, humans, scientific understanding has vastly improved in the last 50 years. Basically, start from the uh, space age. Uh, space age in the, uh, no, uh, no, the space satellite was launched. Fifty years now, so for example, uh, the understanding like these pictures of the Earth, it has to be taken in a space, right? And uh, also this uh, solar X-ray image of the sun has to be taken above atmosphere, just because the X-rays cannot reach the Earth. They will be all absorbed by the uh, atmosphere. So they also, as our civilizations involves more and more technology in the space, and even on the ground, these, uh, the varying conditions of the you know, solar terrestrial environment become, has become you know, more and more important. Um, so the, uh, we talk about all this as a, as a consequence of the sun's variation. And the sun, in general speaking, <coughs> the, sun's, the energy output from the sun is very stable. You're talking about total energy, it varies less than 1% for 100 years. Way less than 1% total energy output. But also the sun's total energy output is so huge, talking about 50 billion tons of TNT <coughs> per second. You know, 50 billion tons, in, that's so huge. So any tiny bit of the variation can cause the consequence. Now that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the point. And also I'll say, say in, depending on how you see that, if you look at the sun's total energy output like a visible light, they're very, very stable, but the sun's never be quiet. They're not only sending out this radiation, this uh, visible infrared and ultraviolet, but they're also sending solar wind, this ionized gas, charged particles <coughs> coming out of the sun. So this picture shows you this called chronograph because the sun is just a visible light. This is a white light, we call this normal light. They have to block the sun. This is a photosphere sun, the solar disk. And then also, because so bright, they also have to block like two solar radii. So you can see the, the the age, uh, adjacent environment. And those lights are reflecting from the sunlight of the particles that's emitted by the sun. Right. So, um, just like the like eclipse, yeah, the eclipse when the moon block the uh, sun, you're not advised to look at the sun directly, but you can see the, the uh, surrounding the sun things very rich. But this is from the satellite taken between the Earth and the sun. You can see that the sun's never been quiet. So this, this is a, a real-time pictures, things coming out of the sun all the time. 
Uh, this is a pretty active time, but even during the quiet time, <coughs> you can look at that, you still experience the chimera sound. All the time. So this is the particles. Sometimes we will see white, more, the whitish and other means more particles. It's all reflection of the sunlight. The reflection of the sunlight, so that's you can see. The, uh, sometimes you can see that maybe the uh, comet uh, passing by. Just, it's never been quiet. And those, what we call solar wind, those charged particles, electron ions, they flow by hundreds of per second. And then the Earth uh, is in the, is the flow, just like obstacles in the solar wind. So the solar wind has, even though they are pretty tenuous, a few particles per centimeter cube, pretty tenuous, but they still could cause consequence. They have charged particles through toward the Earth, and also they have the embedded on this one, you cannot see it, they have the magnetic field as well. The magnetic field will be carried by the charged particles all coming flow to the Earth. The Earth itself has the uh, the Earth itself has a uh, magnetic, uh, magnetic field. So if here you look at this, this is sound, not this is sound, it has particles coming in, and about Earth has its own, like you can imagine the dipole magnetic field, just magnet, gigantic magnet inside the Earth, and that has magnetic field. This is like magnetic field lines. But so the day side be compressed by this uh, solar wind. The night side was be pulled, so you kind of like a comic shape or tail, very long tail. And this mission, is trying to understand, say, <coughs> now before I say mission, I would say, this is a low wind and minus sphere, because it's an Earth's, Earth's interaction. One of the, the most obvious manifestation is the aurora. Yeah, it's aurora. If you look at this picture here, uh, here's Alaska, and then here's uh, this is Florida, and Mexico. Uh, and in the Canada, in the high latitude region, you see this kind of aurora all the time. If you go up there, it, uh, unless it's very cloudy, you cannot see visibly, but you see this all the time. Every night, you can, just, it's there. Just depends on how intensified they are. But it's always at this interaction. Some of the energy from the solar wind, they all impart into the, into the Earth's atmosphere. No, this is a very, this is just most ob uh, obvious uh, manifestations, this one. And I'm, I want to show you one movie. This, I feel like this is a public uh, movie. It's a very good introduction to this for like half a second. I think this lady said it very, very nicely. Uh, Without a doubt, it's one of the most astounding natural phenomena on the planet. One look at the northern lights, and you instantly understand why ancient cultures believed they were magical. And even today, in our scientific age, researchers still don't agree exactly how this planetary light show works. Okay, so that's uh, about the introduction of aurora, and then we're going to show. That's also uh, about the Themis missions. The Themis mission was trying to understand where this aurora lights originated. And then we understand the lights coming from some, something to excite the mole uh, molecules, the ions. And then you excite the all molecules, then they emit light. But what excited those things? <coughs> they believe it's charged particles. Very well understood. This is not just your particles, charged particles coming down and striking. Uh, ion electrons striking those molecules to excite them, so they emit the lights. And the question is about the, we don't know who, exactly where they started, so where it originated, uh, originated those part, charged particle electrons. So this one, this, this uh, famous mission, the uh, acronym of this uh, goddess, of the uh, uh, Greek uh, goddess. They have supposed to have those five spacecraft try to locate, so where is <coughs> original lights you now? Cause <coughs> tiny particles from where? From here or from there. That's really the spirit. The main um, objective was about this one for the Themis. And also, the uh, Themis, uh, this one is talking about another Themis. The reason was the name was chosen because you like the Themis, they were not blindfolded, the eyes were blind, so they would not uh, care about how you look on um, the appearance. And on the one hand, that was uh, not scale representing the justice or fairness, and the other is holding the soul. Terms of punishment. So even before the mission was launched, we talked about what would be the punishment if your theory is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> some people go, wow, well, the that's the real in that story is to chop your head off. But so far, no one was in the head because they are still debating. <laughs> <laughs> no one would admit they are wrong. Um, so but the uh, the objective is talk about these three things. The primary 
this initiation of some substorm is the one you know is we can call a process a process of this energy party from the sun to the magnetosphere. Uh, one manifestation is this uh, aurora, the so substorm. And then when and where and how this eruption starts, that's really basic so initiating the substorm. And also have other two like other things I'm going to do the detail uh, through that. And also, I, I would really encourage you to stop me anytime. Comments or questions. Um, really, I want you to uh, to get what you really wish to get. Um, I really, uh, for me, I'm teaching class as well. I really like students to interrupt me. Um, I'm I'm very happy to entertain that question or uh, comments. Um, so here uh, shows you again. <coughs> this is about happens about uh, about 12 years ago. So this is like science team. Uh, science team obviously 12 years ago we put this proposed but come up here this is uh, funded so this is a uh, uh, people main species the proposal uh, this is uh, uh, now funded this is collaborators from uh, all different country um, you know also even from the US government Howard Singer is like working with right here the NOAA um, is already funded by their agencies it's not funded by NASA so what I emphasize in this uh, famous, this is, from these famous uh, projects, we still call, many people still call it, it's a miracle. Uh, it's a miracle in the sense of very low budget and then high science return. And this never happened before like that or probably never happen again. And I will, give, I will be happy to elaborate more on what, why it's, say, low budget and high science return. And also it's a very, very true international collaboration. Um, so here the, we have this uh, five identical spacecraft, and uh, each weighs about 51 kilogram, but then the carry is about half of them, 49 kilograms of fuel for pollen. And later on, you know why you need to do some maneuver after launch. The cover is like 45 kilogram fuel, and then the instrument is 26 kilo each, each set. Each set has its own instrument. And then the, uh, uh, the Germany, they provided, and uh, also traveling with Australia, Germany, they provided this, uh, thing. Germany provided the call is a Polarsky magnetometer, and the Fran France, uh, French uh, colleagues provide the search coil, and also the ESA, we call not common here, so they provide some of the uh, computer chips. The Canada helped to deploy the ground observation. So the famous mission, not only just five spacecraft, but they also have very well deployed the uh, ground of the look at the sky. Yeah, look at the sky, look at the camera. So it's a real true uh, international collaboration. Um, so like five of these instruments, like two of them are provided by the international uh, collaborators. Um, the, but we still need to do all the integration and the calibration and, uh, and the launch. Who now here's a lot. The electric field guy, who, which, which yeah. provider of electric field? The electric field is built by the Berkeley, UC Berkeley. Berkeley, yeah. UC Berkeley, they build all this uh, electric field. Uh, UC Berkeley, this, uh, they are in the United States, this is probably number one for electric boom. Probably in the world, probably, so they're very well, good heritage for building the electric field. And the electric field, the famous is so successful, even for the previous one. So the, this, uh, the uh, program manager is Peter Harvey. And I think now the reason I say I like questions is because your question reminds me of one very interesting story. Um, I didn't plan to tell that, but one story comes out that bring connect. <laughs> So we also do this one, and before I get to the peanut party, talking about this total is about 200 million. Total 200 million, now 100 million gun for launch. About 100 million gun for launch vehicle, just, just launch, 100 million. And then 100 million left. 100 million need to build in five spacecraft. And probably six, they have an engineer model. Five spacecraft, and then also the core pro carrier, the special carrier, you can carry five spacecraft. Within this 100 million, Plus six sets, six sets all these instruments. Now some instruments provided by international collaborator, but you need to do all integration and calibration. Six sets, you have one spare one. And then mission operation. And also data analysis modeling. And then right now they still pay part of my salaries for the 200 million. And it's just, you cannot even do the any gas. People here, you can ask them for airspace, ask them, would you build a space car for 15 million? Each, uh, this is most big up. Would you build one for each or build six times 15? They will tell you no. And the Swiss, 
and they, they failed it. They said they can do it. They could do it. They could do it, but then they said they couldn't. <laughs> and that time, the Bill Pearson was not supposed to accept this for thinners. They tried to jack up his price. That probably is very normal practice in the, in the real world, probably. They really understand after a while, they said, well, we couldn't do it, we need to jack up, right? We need a little more. Money. But this time, NASA was so firm. We put their foot down and said, we'll cancel the mission. Period. We'll cancel, you're not getting, you're not getting one dollar more. They're very, very firm on that. And they can't say, we'll cancel the mission. And the world say, why we cancel the mission? So eventually, they had to absorb that overrun cost. And if you, if you search on the Google wealth, uh, wealth they're not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> they, were bought, they were bought by no, ATK. But then even though they still, even though they underbid or even absorb some, but still imagine 100 million, how much they underbid. No, this is all preparatory, we couldn't tell. Um, five spacecraft, plus carrier, plus six set instrument, plus all two years data analysis and modeling, plus mission operation, <coughs> all is only 100 million. Yeah, so this, this is a kind of miracle. My, you can, if you do the math, just know where you can do it. <laughs> now that's, that's really the so one is miracle, this is one part of <coughs> And also later on, the space part, everything working super well. And then this is a story about the Peter Hubby. When he does another mission called the RBSP, Radi Radiation Storm Probe, Radiation Storm Probe, that last also involved. That mission is sending two spacecraft, but much more sophisticated spacecraft, look at the radiation environment. They're also going to carry that to field. That mission is about 600 million, two spacecraft, 600 million. They have an electric field. And then Peter Harvey during this uh, uh, preliminary uh, design review and talking about it, he just showed some famous data. How this, the old, the last, I always emphasize the heritage, the how well you have done before and other He shows famous experiment and then how much we cost the building very well. And then one review panel is very seriously asking him, are you going to give us the famous electron boom? And then he said, no, that's too much trouble to take it down. What build you know? And set a new one. Yeah. Just because you can say they very well, this is Berkeley, they were very, very good on this uh, electric field measurement. Yeah, this is uh, for that one. Um, as we go along, uh, we see the, so here shows, uh, again, given the picture shows, again, the sun, uh, solar wind coming, interacting with the Earth. You don't have to go through all details, everything. You think about Earth's kind of field line, and solar wind has those uh, field line too. And you have some interaction, and then one manifestation, you have all of us. And then, here you're trying to see what, which will goes first. Now here we see the aurora eruption, but where they come from? One theory is it maybe has starting from the inside here, and then they don't go outside. Another theory is it about maybe go outside first, and then come inside, so that's been debated. The time is only about one, two minutes. Ooh. Yeah, difference, one, two minutes. And then people will be arguing about what's the, why bother to understand all this? No, that's definitely, common questions. But I always say, well, this is really fundamental because like reconnections in the whole universe, the sun all have the reconnection just to see how uh, the fundamental science words reconnection happen, how they happen. Um, this is still have a scientific value. And also would enhance our understanding to, to make it be, uh, more accurate predictions of this, where how these things will occur, if you understand physically better. Um, here one shows not only the space cloud, here is the uh, Canadian, this is also part of the thinness. So another thing, five space files, six <coughs> set instruments, but we also need to build all this all sky camera, including this 100 million budget. And then Canada will deploy them, maintain them for free. Just just collaboration. And just look at the all sky yeah. And <coughs> one theory, this is one theory say these they come from the outside in. This is one theory, say this think about not solo when coming or interacting with the Earth's magnet field, and then we have energy party to the tail first, and then going forward. So it's like one theory outside in, so the one scenario, and then produce aura. Um, there's one way to produce aura, the part is precipitating and produce aura. <coughs> that was the ammunition. Uh, Another one I just want to show you also here is the aura you see from the ground, the Alaska above the Yukon River, and then this is aura, and Here's the scene from the space shuttle. Right. All right. So you see, air all the time, if you in a high altitude, the sky is clear. Not necessarily as pretty as this one, right? It's strong, but you see all the time. Yeah, but also you can see some other times in the lower uh, latitude region. People recognize this one, most people recognize this one, right? Uh, but that's only during the very, very 
strong storm. It's not like an only sub sub storm. It's a very strong uh, interaction with solar wind to the Earth's magnetosphere. Uh, this one, this is M half uh, with light eye, and that happens in uh, November twentieth, uh, two thousand three. November 20th, 2003. That was one of our colleagues, Stan Solomon. He just used his amateur camera to take this picture. Yeah, some of the students, well, I wish I stayed there that night. <laughs> yeah, just beautiful, yeah. And it happens in the, a few times, like, like in the last solar cycle. Right now, we're in a solar minimum, right now, we don't see this. There's no big storm, we cannot, see, we cannot expand to the low latitude region. And uh, regardless of the what caused aurora, um, there's some spec now. There are some the uh, aspect of the space weather application. They say like particles. This is looking from a different you know, We're looking from the equator, like view from the equator or from the north. Look at the equator down. They were very well known charged particles, not just coming to go to the uh, aurora in a high latitude, but also could be injecting from the tail to this uh, geosynchronous solar. Geosynchronous orbit, geosynchronous orbit cause some uh, space uh, charging. So that was one one effect. Associated with or uh, associated with substorm, associated with that. Um, now also, this is from the after the primary science objective with the first bonus is to understand the source population of MEV electrons. So don't need to pay attention to this. Obviously, those MEV electrons can go up and down this logarithm, logarithm can by several orders of magnitude, and we can forecast them so far well during the solar uh, minimum time, but then to if we want to enhance our forecast, it will be we like to understand better. So it's that thing must help us to get collecting more data for, get, for us to uh, further analysis. And another example from here that they also try to understand is the, this radiation belt. This is another this is radiation belt, very energetic part of traveling the Earth. You know, what the acceleration mechanism lead to this uh, enhancement? So that was like a a bonus of the thermal station, not the primary objective. Primary objective to try to understand where the aurora initiated. And another bonus is like a satellite because it's more, the five satellites sometimes have this orientation, and you can also understand the day side, what we call day side, is interaction with solar wind and the uh, manosphere. Day side. There's, like, there's two bonuses. Now, in the proposal, we propose it as not the really primary objective, it's the secondary, or you still can do something else. Um, so here to show you some of the uh, configuration, instrument configuration, we talk about this uh, servo, this instrument. Uh, later on, you can see this how this deployed. Um, the electric, electric field, you have to be very, very long because the electric field, you vary the electric field by the potential difference. You like to make it very, very long. You want to make it very long, so you just a wire, at least like 20 meters. This is 20 meter, um, 20 meter long each side, and they have four pair of loops, so 40 meters tip to tip. Then in order to make them, we have to spin the satellite to make the centrifugal force to make this like, deploy it out. Um, to you know, if they all put in this on this uh, you have to build this put in the box, the wired box, and then only pop the cover, and then since you have to spin the satellite and then close out. So satellite right now is spin like every three seconds. The one rotation that spin here is three seconds. And those blue is easy to deploy. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't know how deep I want to go in, but uh, if you interrupt me, we're good. I can, yes. Uh, that unlabeled room there, are those uh, rotation weights? Uh, pardon me, can you tell me which one? The one that's not the labeled. Two. This one? No, no. Just are those spin weights to stabilize it? The spin, that's just all your spin to destabilize it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Is there any static electric ball? Electric bow, some amplifier, yes, yeah, it's just like a, this, this bow, this big, so about this big. Part of the electric field. Part of the electric field measurement, just oh, like oh. a sphere, <coughs> like a small sphere, the tie to the wire, and so when you uh, spin out and then push, there's a, there's a spring first, there's a spring inside, when you open the gate and then they push that out and then you start to, you know, oh. deploy it out, yeah. Part of the electric field measurement. And so this is the configuration, and then any feature you want to know, and I'll try my best to uh, someone can help to. So this is another configuration of the uh, called the Pro, yeah, including the uh, all these instruments. Pro, the, you can see the couple of things. I'll point out is you have 49 kilogram fuel propellant, hydrogen propellant. So this is like you have to put a 
this metric for you, nine kilograms, and then you want to burn efficiently, you will have this uh, reverse tank, which is regulated to regulate the fuel burn. Uh, also, you can see all of you make a very symmetric uh, four electric fuel booms. Uh, uh, symmetric one, also this one, a very heavy instrument, you put a battery here, counterbalance it. This one all make them very uh, symmetric. Uh, so, center of the gravity should be, literally, should be the center. I just did the point the same. They also have to use this thruster for the tank. Um, let me see here now. This uh, the last for so hardware wise, last contribution is only building this one, building four. Uh, this is a digital fuel board. That was used for the uh, search for your and then electric fuel measurement. And the last one, the scientist Bob Bergen is leading on this hardware board. Uh, Bob Bergen and I were the original code masculine. And then the, uh, we talk, then I'll show you the, the configuration of how you're going to be putting the uh, nose cone, the barrier. So this is the uh, uh, swells, now building all this bus and including this carrier. And this is the third stage okay, of the Delta II, uh, connected to this <coughs> carrier, and later on how you deploy it out. The, okay, this is the first time ever, just in the NASA mission, you launch five together by one vehicle. So we talk about time sequence. So this is a 2006. The proposal we submitted is 98. And then the 99 we heard like we in the face A. They gave you like half a million dollars to do further study. And uh, usually this NASA how the data goes. They found like a six proposal. They submit like a 30 or 60. They found six proposals. And then the say each one give you half a million dollars. After half a year come back, another competition. And then they selected two out of the six. So famous is one of them. So 99, we got the PSA study, and then 2000, after some, some delay, and then 2003, we got the, the go ahead. 2003 was selected at, into the real uh, phase B, and have another concept study, and then basically, phase, once you select phase B, if you do everything right, then you say, go, go along. And so 2003, we were all, formally selected, and then so this environment test is studied, uh, this, Late, so 2006, everything's built, calibrated, integrated. Then they're going to send to the JPL. Berkeley used Berkeley didn't have this facility. They send to the JPL for this uh, um, test, like the electric field, magnetic interference, or coupling, DC magnetic vibration, acoustic, thermal, you know, just all those tests in the JPL had all the facility. So we'll just go quickly. If you are interested in more, we'll uh, uh, try to uh, discuss more. So that's an old approach to some of balanced vibration tests. Yeah, we put all the facility tests on. Let me see how this will work. So this one, um, so just the rotate around, uh, just to balance one. Sometimes this one didn't show very well, just sometimes why so when it go fast, I said almost like this person here pushing around. Um, just for testing and balance one. But also individually, when we do the, all the thermal, they have to jack up the, you know, raise the temperature to let like, say 80, and then drop temperature to minus 80, and Celsius. And Celsius, usually the space is like, you know, on the sun, <coughs> it's about 80 Celsius, and the, in the shadow, about minus 80. It's like do all this amount of tests. Uh, so also do this individual balancing, and also this for magnetic cleanness. So because the sun is so fastidious, because you want to make measurement of magnetic field. And environment magnetic field is very weak. If you have one electric wire, if floating around, you cannot make a measurement. If any electro while they go generate the magnetic field, will interfere in your uh, actual measurement. So all the electro has to be wired very carefully, cancel each other, all can loop. And you do not have any net magnetic field outside. Also, in that, how far away is it? Right? How far away One meter away should have some specification. Magnetic field has to be very, very low. This is called the magnetic field cleanliness. So that's just not trivial building on the space part. So some other space part you do not care about magnetic field, then you do not have to do this. But for this one, yeah. Um, like so, the so story goes, we got to say that another part of this famous is such a miracle. So 2006, they think everything's fine, and they put in the storage, the perish, like they have a, like a natural gene perish because some of the electro uh, channel, uh, micro electron channel, they cannot have any moisture, so they keep uh, pushing, going the natural gene going through. When you have any moisture, air, and when you launch up, they could be freezing, to freeze, and then can crack. 
So they put all this dryness, so they, you know, they'll stay here, but they all have wire connected that purges them with weight. And then at that time, the uh, Boeing companies launched in North Sunlight, they started to say they may have to delay. They may have to delay the launch. That's very common. They have to delay. And the thing is, is we're ready, we're ready you now. So then if you delay and delay to how many months, you have like one month, two months grace period. If you delay more, you're supposed to pay some fine. Right? Pay some fine. And but the thing is, they were ready, ready. But then they uh, eventually the Boeing said they had to delay. And the Zimbus was not quite ready, they didn't know, but they thought they were ready. And then during the pre-shipping, during this pre-shipping review, they put the, they did this uh, extended vacuum test on this, uh, this uh, no, flight model number six, because I have five spacecraft, the spare one, the extended, and they found out the pre amp heading to the red limit, just uh, well, it's too much current going on there. And if this one had been launched, after like a one month or so, the electric fuel battery may be gone. And also the surgical will be gone. So that you can now say this is a uh, full, uh, full success mission. And so they just identify, before the pre-launch, they identify this one. Then say they have this uh, pre-amps, this uh, pre-amplifier, this one part of the electric fuel boom measurement. Uh, also associated with search coil. So that one, they have to do all the, just they have to get, just you know, just move on, goes through all of this. They have to do, <coughs> basically they have to, dismount all the all. They take all their part. <coughs> they say very lucky there's no welding, just everything is screwed in and then they unscrew them. This one like is like this one is like holding down screw everything. So each space club have the six booms. Two spin uh, two pair, I mean it's four spin plane, one actual boom. So six of the they have they have to take all the all and then check double check the polarity of the capacitor. So the capacitor of polarity could be the reverse. So they were accumulated, accumulated the current. I didn't like this type of company. So that's why they could cost, you know, eventually cost to fail, short, short it. So they're very lucky. And they were they thought they were ready, but then they found out it's not quite ready. But then by that time, they Boeing already said they had to delay the launch. How did they find that? Was it by a test when one failed, or did they just find it with a drawing review? Or? They, they had a more extended test. And uh, first of all, the, 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 the funny part is that the uh, capacitor cap, the label was not so clear. So, like I just said, positive, negative, was not so clear. They put it on, but then just not so clear that so it might be reversed. So it's not every part reversed. All 50 50 chance, you're not so careful. But once it happened to be the sixth set, like, like number six, just, uh, the, they had more the extending. Of life extending. Yeah, and more extended yes. tests, then they found out. Before maybe you test like a, a day or a week, they didn't find it out. Have, but after everything sitting there now, there's less test again. Pretty soon we'll be asking for the test more. So after a like, longer time, they find out, oh, this is really hitting the uh, red limit. So they have to bring all of them back, this month of everything. So the other thing is for NASA project, all this, that part ate, basically ate all the uh, margin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they all talk about like a reserve. 20% of reserves have all been paid off. But still, how many nobody still on the budget? That's not even a really sticking for money to that. Reserve. They're all in the run, all manpower to get up. Although, although good thing is they were, uh, before that one, the Boeing said they had to delay launch. Uh, delay launch, and then Boeing would pay some fine, like half a million or something. And then the people also asking, so who actually paid the fine? They said it was the next conscious. Because Boeing did not lose the money. Because we bought this one 15 years ago for this Delta II launch. It's about 85 million or 100 million, about that number. But before they launched, like 2007, even 120 million, you won't buy the Boeing launch because the price keeps going up. And so that was still said, Boeing has to pay some fine, but you know who actually paid for it? Make sure. Make sure next launch is because there's no competition. You just Delta II launch is very reliable, by the way. Just price it into the next They just, just price it out. No big deal. Yeah, right, they all even they even feel like it was not so profitable. They even discontinued Delta too launch. <coughs> even though it's so uh, expensive you think about the hundred uh, twenty million for the long part. Um, so now luckily just this found out all redone. So now they're back to the two thousand seven February, two thousand seven they put the house in launch. You can see this this Delta two launch vehicle and uh, you can you can remember this is a human one person. There's another person how the size with the emergency. So this is a four or five probes and then carry out and run, putting up 
period. And then long short, <coughs> long short delay back to one day. This time is not weather. You know, we had a science working group before the launch. I was there, but then they say delayed. I couldn't wait. I have to come back and teach. So I didn't see this. Uh, so they, they launched uh, successfully, um, and then just uh, and after I came back home, they sent this picture, and I showed those pictures. And when I showed the first time in my class, one student asked, "Why this? Why the uh, rocket goes this way?" <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I said, "No, because it goes, the very very calm way, it goes straight." So I will now show that. So you cannot see this uh, detail after a while, but then there's some, some animation. So you can see some animation only. Uh, next one. This NASA to be this one. I don't even have some music. <laughs> this animation you can see maybe like a <laughs> The solid booster will come out first. Yeah. So successful, and then the initially put on this orbit. You can see about think about this space side, this Earth, little bit small Earth, and then this uh, planetosphere. Looking from the uh, North Pole, they come, this for this time they just all uh, stuck together. Uh, they all they just move up. So they 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 did not deploy the electric field until they you know push them to the higher uh, altitude. You see that because the electric magnet and I feel this like dominating the, all the momentum. Sometimes the momentum dominated by this uh, 40 meter, even those one kilogram or, or a half a kilogram, those, those uh, sphere, but they're really dominating uh, all the dynamic. So when, when they're boosting, when they're using that hydrogen fuel, yeah. that's, uh, that was in the, the, in the tank, yeah, the 49 kilogram. Yeah. That's very, very critical. 49 kilogram, you will see they have a lot of use on this 49 kilogram. Also, they do very, very sophisticated calculation. When to do it, where to do it, and then you know, just where to do it. Also, this this orbit, the not moon, another thing I'm gonna talk about, the moon is about 60 Earth radii. I'm talking about the internal Earth radii. Earth radii. Moon is about 60 Earth radii. Those orbits are affected by the moon already. Mm -hmm. perturbed by the moon. Yeah, uh, about the moon. So you have a very, very, very uh, all well planned. This is like the only demand teaching space dynamics. But those are three body things that have all surface program. So they were boost them first and then deploy the electric field, speed them up. And then they, then they were they are processing, they're processing all the different rates. 
here's a very simple uh, uh, simplified. So this is like one of the primary mission. So you all add up every four days. The period, the period is uh, the fast ones like four days, and this one's two days, and those three together, one day. So every four days, you have this almost like perfect line up. But this didn't last very long, they slowly uh, processing. And then you have the, this is like a starting relation about this uh, primary mission, and you can start the data side as well. So we, we passed the first primary mission, and then we just finished the second primary mission. We have to do this uh, primary mission in the winter, so you can see aurora better. Then you have the all sky camera in Canada, you know, with the aurora, and they have, they all has to, primary mission has to do that. So there's another thing is where our uh, primary mission is over, and our budget is over. So we'll have already submitted our extension of this, uh, for the extended mission proposal. That's another NASA business. When you submit a mission, it's about two years, the primary mission. The primary mission is over, the money is out. But normally, say, if your instrument, everything works fine, you send me, uh, say, proposals, we still can do different science, or this science, that science. Can we continue this one? Yes? Do you still have five probes? Yes, five probes, every single one works, every single instrument works normally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's another miracle. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a miracle. Every single instrument, every single speed card works. And so, so this launch one now, from <coughs> has like received, famous, received so much uh, publicity. NASA is also named as one of the top ones. Just uh, under, under, within, within budget, under budget, produce great science, and then they, we don't have to go to detail this thing, but again, you, just, you can see in the title, it's talking about the original or right. Even though in the press, we also talk about, oh, so, so, yeah. But in our science team, we didn't reach out of it. Now, we have some evidence, we have some new theory, but we still have something which not so, just like also typical science mission. You read small questions, then you question answer. Now, you have, we have much, much better understanding now, but we still have, say, further questions. That's the typical cycle. And after all this publicity, and then talking about primary mission here, primary goal, so we reach, we don't have to look at this one, we say, we talk about the where is the stuff going to be initiated. So this is a, this is the principal investigator, Angelos uh, uh, Angelopoulos. Uh, had this science paper published now. So from his digging this paper with all well, team as co-authors. Now this new theory here is a initiated from the tail first, and then come to the uh, aurora, and later all come to the later. So this is a little bit different from the other two. The other two we talk about is. Uh, why say we initiate first here, go to Aura, come back to the third. Another one we showed the movie, which is from further out, come in and then go through. So this is now he said from that paper say those two this is not as common. Uh, basically they were trying to say those two will not work. But then he proposed this one. But we again so we still have team members say they were still in the system. Uh, we also can have see some evidence supporting this one, maybe some evidence supporting that one. But more we'll evidence to support this one, so we declared to the, at least we resolve that. Okay. Can we yes. show four orbits there instead of three? A viable, there were originally four five or six years ago, but did they get that put down to three years ago? You say four or five? P five is closer to P four and three. I think. So this is not. In High drag scale. I'll show you. They were the move a little bit, different like uh, latitude. Oh, this is this is a field one tracing. Yeah, this okay. is not in the uh, uh, geographic one. So the magnetic coordinate. Yeah, those three are supposed to be close together ge geographically. Yeah, but then you the, the, all of the magnetic field lines is uh, so there seems to be a park more. But also they were they have a little bit different the periodicity. This three and four. Yeah, but those three is supposed to be close together. <coughs> And then this, uh, another two. So they would just say, okay, we care, primary mission is over, we uh, achieved the primary uh, uh, objective. Um, then they were also, this is like a, uh, another like bonus one, we studied also in the sphere, just kind of few lines that have done. Don't, don't need to look detail, just like a pretty remarkably coherent uh, electric kind of few measurement. This, uh, Movement. And this is one of my former graduate students, uh, also <coughs> up, now he's working the half, half time in the last and half time in the Greece. Uh, in the so uh, let me see now. So now here comes our extended mission. 
this is also NASA business. So the 12, two years down, so we, are, we, are, uh, we say, well, we could need to do some different study. How do we do that? So we could uh, uh, put this three swap inside, much closer to each other. Also, they never been this close together before <coughs> um, to study the, uh, the night side. Because you, know, you say night side, or you never, first ever, if you put them kind of very, very close together to study this micro, small scale uh, phenomena. This is one, uh, and also we say, well, we propose to do the uh, inner magnosphere study. Um, we propose to do the day side study, but this time the sun is on the right hand side. So we have to do three of them very, very close together. This is the one we will argue. We argue. The another one we argue is say we, the other two spacecraft will not survive second eclipse. They survive the first eclipse about seven hours. Eclipse, the, the, the inner tail, you get sun, sun, sun is here, Earth is here. When satellite goes to the tail, the eclipse by the Earth. The longest one, seven hours. That one survived. Seven hours minus 80 degree, you all just hang everything turned off, but you have the battery provide the heat to keep the instrument from cracking. Seven hours they survived. When they come out of the sunlight, the solar panel absorbing the sunlight generate electricity again. So that survived, but they know for sure when the last come again, because the, con the orientation and configuration so this time will be like 10 hours or so. You say that we we'll we'll for sure will not survive. So number five is going to, you say, if you do not do anything, we'll be dead. But fortunately, they have still have a few. So what do we propose? We're sending them to the moon. So we're sending those two spacecraft um, further out. Initially, they're called P1 and P2. We're going to send them to the moon. But we still have a few. Once you send them to the moon, and they will survive. Because the moon has the, their own some uh, infrared radiation. Also, the moon is in a circular orbit. That's just something amazing. Before the orbit is like called elliptic, they spend so much time in the apogee. This is a Kepler's law. People talk about Kepler's law. But once you are, even though this is like a 30 Earth 3D or 20 Earth 3D, they spend much more time if you have a circular orbit, a 6 Earth 3D, 60 Earth 3D. 60 Earth 3D, you spend less time in the eclipse. And, but if you <coughs> circular orbit, but if it's an elliptic orbit, because cover law and area area covered by the spacecraft is the same. So in an apogee, apogee is, this is hanging there for too long. <coughs> so they send it to the moon, they will survive. But this proposal so far being accepted uh, by the NASA. They are still doing some uh, feasibility study. They're accepted, they're sending two spacecraft to the moon. That also is helped by the JPL, this moon orbit. Yeah, about six Earth really high. And they're going to do very, also very sophisticated trajectory because they cannot go to the moon directly. If you go to the moon directly, you cannot slow down. Right? You all have to go to this very sophisticated lunar orbit. <laughs> Takes them several years, the one, 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 and then you can almost the same speed as the moon. And the same speed as the moon. And then you have a, still have a little bit, little bit of the field. You are like a ritual bird. And then be trapped. Now you go with the moon at the same time, and then you burn, reach over, and then start to track. So that was a proposal. But even this proposal sounds very great. Uh, our funding is only cut, 40% uh, uh, funding cut for the next year. That's not as in typical, like well, we have a, last we have a, we, can, we have two postdocs full time working on this project. So after next year, there's two postdocs, one of them has to go. <laughs> and then, but they also typical sounds like a career wise, if you have two years post us, you're pretty luxury. So you do not worry about funding. You just work on the science, two years. But then within these two years, you should develop your own. So this two post out encourage everybody to write the uh, proposals to, to work on different things. They need to acquire external funding. Now, if they cannot acquire the funding, they need to you have to change the career or have to do something else. But usually, usually people, if you're good ones, that's all that thing. America is very competitive. And you could uh, say, uh, writing proposals, get some funded, then you can part of time you work on this big project, part of time you work on your own, you establish yourself. That's the typical uh, way people do. Yeah. Uh, so funding is cost 60%, but we still do a lot of, you know, we say a lot of science. But this is, this is something that pretty unique. They send to move or survive. That's how they go ahead, and otherwise, you know, you know, otherwise you couldn't die anyway. So that's probably my summary of this talk, and uh, probably can read through that. So we, so we delivered on the promise, on the budget, just 
for me, it's still amazing. Every time I talk about fitness, I keep just talk, not the same one, several times. I just feel excited because I feel part of the 1998, I was invited to be part of the team, we wrote a proposal together and going through all from the keep talking about credo to the tube or something. Yeah. Right now, we don't see the tube yet. <laughs> We're still trying to survive. Keep writing, extending mission, extending mission. As long as the works, well, another thing is like Voyager, if you people remember. Yes. Or 72. They're still sending data back. And they still have part, tiny, tiny money. They're still funding people doing the research. Tiny, like 1% of the original ones. But they're still, they're still saying, but you see, things are working, why you turn them off? You know, that's all argued. But another thing is, not that we argue that NASA is really the pioneer and exploring the frontier. If they do not turn off this old mission, how can they find new mission? That's another argument. They want to turn this off and want to find new mission. Yeah. And so, this is my last word is uh, this is still mirror. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.